What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Coral Reef Talk. Today we're taking a look at the AP Aqua RODI Flood Guardian. Okay, so let's talk about making water. Now, if you have an RODI unit and you make your own RO water and your own salt water at home for your reef tank, then you might run into this problem. You turn on your RODI unit, you let your tanks fill up with water, and then you fall asleep or you run an errand or you're too busy doing something else and you forget to turn off the RODI unit and your basement floods, your garage floods, your closet floods, wherever your RODI unit. In my case, it's in my garage. And yes, I've flooded my garage multiple times. So I'm in desperate need of today's video. What we're talking about is the XP Aqua RODI Flood Guardian. Now I'm excited to hook this up and try it out. I had to make a video for you guys. So let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at what comes inside the box for the Flood Guardian. Now, if we open up the box here, see everything neatly packaged inside. You have your dual optical sensors in here, as well as a little mounting bracket or a bracket for your air hose right there to go through. And then you also have a DC uh, solenoid valve that hooks up in your water line on either side here. And then let's take a look in here. You have your power plug right here. And then of course you have your instructions. Okay, so this is the optical sensor that's gonna stop the water from filling up your container. Now this optical sensor, it's a lot more reliable than the traditional float valves that are out there. I'm gonna take you guys back to where I make my RODI water and we're gonna hook this up and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so let's come out here to where I make my RODI water. You can see this is my holding tank right here and this is where all my fresh water is made and then right in this container is where I mix up all of my salt water. So we're gonna get started with hooking up the Flood Guardian and I'll show you exactly how I'm gonna do it. Now there's two options. There's an option A and an option B of how to hook this up. One option is if your RODI unit has a shutoff valve already installed, there's an option to do that. And then the other option would be if you don't have that shutoff valve. So I'm gonna hook it up, option B. So this is the line coming out of my RODI unit. Now I'm gonna cut it right here so we can put the solenoid in place and then we can hook up the optical sensor inside this container. Okay, so whenever you're hooking up the solenoid valve, you wanna make sure you pay attention to the arrow located on the bottom of the valve. There is an indicator of which direction the water is gonna flow and you wanna make sure you hook that up correctly. So this is coming out of the RODI. So you want to use the push connect fitting. You wanna push it in place. Again, pay attention to that arrow right there. And then you can push in the other side right here. And just like that, you have your solenoid. Now the solenoid plugs into one of the two plugs here on your optical sensor. And then the other one is for the power to plug into the wall. Plug that in right there. And we're gonna plug power into this one. And we're gonna set up the optical sensor inside the container. All right, now before we do that, we're gonna mount 
the water line with this nice mounting bracket that's included and I'm just gonna put it right here on top where the lid would go and we're gonna mount it like so. Well, you get the picture. You run your airline tube in there, get it where you want it, tighten it on whatever container you want. And I won't necessarily need to use the mounting bracket. I just have this as an example. It shows you the water going down because I have a direct input into my container right here. All right, so now you wanna hook your power into the other side of your optical sensor. Right here, plug that in here, that, and then now we can get our sensor in place. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to actually install the optical sensor right up here in this little square part of my container. It's easy to install, it's just a magnet. So we're going to put the sensor down in here, like that, and then you get right there. So now the optical sensor is in place and you can see it right there. And now when the water level reaches that, it will automatically shut off. It's not going to overflow anymore and flood the entire garage. The wife's going to be happy about that one. By the way, the flood guardian is also known as, if it focuses, the marriage saver. So. They knew what they were doing when they called it that and it's going to make everybody's life happier knowing that the garage or basement or wherever your container is is no longer going to flood and get water all over the place. Okay so once you have everything hooked up the way you like it there's only one more thing to do and that's plug it in and then make some water. Wow, it is another hot Florida day, and why are we outside? Well, this is where I turn on the RODI unit, so let's get it turned on so we can check out the XP Aqua Flood Guardian. Okay, that should do it. Let's head back inside. So I like to flush my RODI unit before and after I use it, so that's what it's doing right now. Then we'll switch it on uh, to full, let it fill up the container, and then of course you always want to check your TDS as well coming in and out. Don't know if that's picking up on camera, but it's at nine right now going in. And zero going out, so we're good on the output of water. And then we'll switch it over, fill up that container, and watch the flood guardian do its thing. Yep, it looks like it might be time for me to change my membranes and some of my other filters, but right now I'm getting zero TDS coming out, so should be good. And over here we have the container filling up. We have the sensor in place, you can tell right here. Now we just have to wait for it to fill up. And this is a 35 gallon container. We're at a little over 25 gallons right now, so we got some time. Now when the Flood Guardian is powered on, the LED light will flash three times with three beeps and after every power up it will perform a one time fill up. Which is great because I ended up leaving the house and I forgot I left the water running. But luckily when I made it back home the Flood Guardian did its job and stopped the water flow and the container was full. Now when the Flood Guardian detects water and stops the water flow, the LED light will flash with five long beeps and then turn solid. Okay, so that's it for the XP Aqua Flood Guardian. Now, what do I think about this product? I think it's a really good product. It's very easy to set up, easy to use. I mean, once you hook it up like you saw in the video, I plugged it in, I left and I accidentally forgot the water was running and when I got back, there was no flood. So peace of mind, definitely save you in the long run. If you want more information, head over to xpaqua.com, check out the Flood Guardian, uh, their auto top off products. They have a lot more products than just this one, 
great stuff. I mean, the optical sensor, I find that fantastic. I hope you check it out. If you end up getting one, let me know in the comments below. Uh, drop me a like on this video. If you have any questions, comment down below, and I'll see you next time on the Coral Reef Talk. Hey guys, don't forget if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and check the bell icon to be notified every single time I make a new video. Now, a lot of you guys watch this channel, but I see in my analytics that you're not subscribed. So go ahead, click that subscribe button. It's free to do and you'll be up to date on everything the Coral Reef Talk has to put out. And also check out the Coral Reef Talk podcast. It's free to listen to, head on over to anchor.fm slash the coral reef talk and let me know what you think about the podcast thank you again for watching i'll see you in the next one